Good morning, and welcome to Third Church of Christ Scientist of New York City. Let's begin the service with singing hymn number 370, 370. We are hid with Christ forever in the Father's holy plan. In this pure, eternal union, we behold the perfect man, and we know that sin can never overthrow the sacred rod of dominion over evil. We are hid with Christ in God. Number 370. The scriptural selection is from Matthew. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asks his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what man is what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father and his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Let's pray together silently for a few moments, and then pray aloud together the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all, and all. Let's sing hymn number 219, 219. O life, it maketh all things new, the blooming earth, the thoughts of men, our pilgrim feet wet with thy dew, in gladness hither turn again. Number 219.
This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. The Wednesday testimony meeting includes singing hymns, readings from the Bible and the Christian Science textbook, and the opportunity to hear how people are living what they are learning from their study of Christian science. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 12 noon and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. All services are held in person and online, and all are welcome. Third Church offers Sunday school classes in person and online for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are available each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. For more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Replays are available on our website, thirdchurchnyc.com, in both English and Spanish, of our Good Friday talk titled, What is Resurrection Thinking? by Brian Webster. The solo, sung by Jenny Lynn Stewart, is titled, Like as the Art Desireth. The music is by Francis Allitsen.
explaining the Bible texts in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson sermon for today begins on page 34 of the full text edition of the Christian Science Quarterly and on page 16 of the citation edition. The subject is life. The golden text and the responsive reading are from the International Children's Bible. Psalms. I thirst for the living God. The responsive reading is also from Psalms. Lord, I trust in you. I trust only in the Lord. I will be glad because of your love. You have not let my enemies defeat me. You have set me in a safe place. My life is in your hands. In my distress, I said, God cannot see me. But you heard my prayer when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you who belong to him. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise is always on my lips. My whole being praises the Lord. Those who go to him for help are happy. They are never disgraced. The Lord saves those who fear him. His angel camps round about, camps around them. Those people who go to the Lord for help will have every good thing. Children, come and listen to me. I will teach you to worship the Lord. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those whose spirits have been crushed. People who do what is right may have many problems, but the Lord will solve them all. I wait patiently for God. Only he can save me. People, trust God all the time. The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible, Psalms. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Acts, for in him we live and move and have our being. Proverbs, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. John, these words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. As announced in the explanatory note, I shall now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Because life is God, life must be eternal, self-existent. Life is the everlasting I am, the being who was and is and shall be, whom nothing can erase. This is life eternal, says Jesus, is, not shall be. And then he defines everlasting life as a present knowledge of his Father and of himself, the knowledge of love, truth, and life. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. When apparently near the confines of mortal existence, standing already within the shadow of the death valley, 
I learned these truths in divine science, that all real being is in God, the divine mind, and that life, truth, and love are all-powerful and ever-present, that the opposite of truth, called error, sin, sickness, disease, death, is the false testimony of false material sense of mind in matter, that this false sense evolves in belief, a subjective state of mortal mind, which this same so-called mind names matter, thereby shutting out the true sense of spirit. When God called the author to proclaim his gospel to this age, there came also the charge to plant and water his vineyard. Before writing this work, Science and Health, she made copious notes of scriptural exposition, which have never been published. This was during the years 1867 and 1868. These efforts show her comparative ignorance of the stupendous life problem up to that time and the degrees by which she came at length to its solution but she values them as a parent may treasure the memorials of a child's growth, and she would not have them changed. Life is eternal. We should find this out and begin the demonstration thereof. Psalms. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who hast set thy glory above the heavens. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Isaiah. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Colossians. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. In Colossians 3, 4, Paul writes, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, be manifested, then shall ye also appear, be manifested, with him in glory. When spiritual being is understood in all its perfection, continuity, and might, then shall man be found in God's image, the absolute meaning of the apostolic words is this, then shall man be found in his likeness, perfect as the Father, indestructible in life, hid with Christ in God, with truth in divine love, where human sense hath not seen man. Who shall say that man is alive today but may be dead tomorrow? What has touched life, God, to such strange issues? Here, theories cease, and science unveils the mystery and solves the problem of man. The great mistake of mortals is to suppose that man, God's image and likeness, is both matter and spirit, both good and evil. Life is always has been and ever will be independent of matter, for life is God, and man is the idea of God, 
not formed materially, but spiritually, and not subject to decay and dust. The admission to one's self that man is God's own likeness sets man free to master the infinite idea. This conviction shuts the door on death and opens it wide towards immortality. The understanding and recognition of spirit must finally come, and we may as well improve our time in solving the mysteries of being through an apprehension of divine principle. At present, we know not what man is, but we certainly shall know this when man reflects God. According to divine science, man is in a degree as perfect as the mind that forms him. In proportion to his purity is man perfect, and perfection is the order of celestial being which demonstrates life in Christ, life's spiritual ideal. Psalms. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Isaiah. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Daniel, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea, be strong. Isaiah, the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. The grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The Christian scientist has enlisted to lessen evil, disease, and death, and he will overcome them by understanding their nothingness and the allness of God or good. Evil calls itself something when it is nothing. It saith, I am man, but I am not the image and likeness of God, whereas the scriptures declare that man was made in God's likeness. The five material senses testify to truth and error as united in a mind both good and evil. Their false evidence will finally yield to truth, to the recognition of spirit and of the spiritual creation. When the substance of spirit appears in Christian science, the nothingness of matter is recognized. Where the Spirit of God is, and there is no place where God is not, evil becomes nothing, the opposite of the something of spirit. The problem of nothingness or dust to dust will be solved, and mortal mind will be without form and void, for mortality will cease when man beholds himself God's reflection even as man sees his reflection in a glass. Nothing really has life but God, who is infinite life. Hence, all is life, and death has no dominion. Christian science brings to light truth and its supremacy, universal harmony, the entireness of God, good, and the nothingness of evil. Matthew. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, 
teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jesus taught the way of life by demonstration that we may understand how this divine principle heals the sick, casts out error, and triumphs over death. The divinity of the Christ was made manifest in the humanity of Jesus. Christian science reveals incontrovertibly that mind is all in all, that the only realities are the divine mind and idea. This great fact is not, however, seen to be supported by sensible evidence until its divine principle is demonstrated by healing the sick and thus proved absolute and divine. This proof once seen, no other conclusion can be reached. For three years after my discovery, I sought the solution of this problem of mind healing, searched the scriptures, and read little else, kept aloof from society, and devoted time and energies to discovering a positive rule. When it is learned that disease cannot destroy life, and that mortals are not saved from sin or sickness by death, this understanding will quicken into newness of life. You can prove for yourself, dear reader, the science of healing, and so ascertain if the author has given you the correct interpretation of scripture. Psalms. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Micah. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Romans. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. As sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. We all must learn that life is God. Ask yourself, am I living the life that approaches the supreme good? Atonement is the exemplification of man's unity with God, whereby man reflects divine truth, life, and love. Jesus of Nazareth taught and demonstrated man's oneness with the Father, and for this we owe him endless homage. His mission was both individual and collective. He did life's work aright, not only in justice to himself, but in mercy to mortals, to show them how to do theirs, but not to do it for them, nor to relieve them of a single responsibility. The atonement is a hard problem in theology, but its scientific explanation is that suffering is an error of sinful sense which truth destroys, and that eventually both sin and suffering will fall at the feet of everlasting love. Let us rid ourselves of the belief that man is separated from God and obey only the divine principle, life and love. Here is the great point of departure for all true spiritual growth. Luke. Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers 
and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was par parted from them and carried up into heaven. The lonely precincts of the tomb gave Jesus a refuge from his foes, a place in which to solve the great problem of being. His three days' work in the sepulcher set the seal of eternity on time. He proved life to be deathless and love to be the master of hate. He met and mastered on the basis of Christian science, the power of mind over matter, all the claims of medicine, surgery, and hygiene. The fact that the Christ or truth overcame and still overcomes death proves the king of terrors to be but a mortal belief or error which truth destroys with the spiritual evidences of life. And this shows that what appears to the senses to be death is but a mortal illusion. For to the real man and the real universe, there is no death process. 
our master gained the solution of being, demonstrating the existence of but one mind without a second or equal. Human belief has sought out many inventions, but not one of them can solve the problem of being without the divine principle of divine science. Mortal man can never rise from the temporal debris of error, belief in sin, sickness, and death until he learns that God is the only life. Imperfect mortals grasp the ultimate of spiritual perfection slowly. But to begin aright and to continue the strife of demonstrating the great problem of being is doing much. Life and being are of God. During the collection in the church, contributions may be made via our website, thirdchurchnyc.com. Let's sing hymn number 157157. I'll read all three verses. Jesus' prayer for all his brethren, Father, that they may be one, echoes down through all the ages, nor prayed he for these alone, but for all, that through all time God's will be done. One, the mind and life of all things, for we live in God alone. One, the love, whose ever presence blesses all and injures none. Safe within this love, we find all being one. Day by day, the understanding of our oneness shall increase, till among all men and nations, warfare shall forever cease. So God's children all shall dwell in joy and peace. Number 157. Oh, mm -hmm. 
The Scientific Statement of Being from the Christian Science Textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And it's correlative scripture according to 1 John. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure." As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.